Are you considering learning web development? Perhaps your goal is to land a great job in the industry, but you are unsure where to start. It can be challenging to figure out which skills to learn first and how to present them to potential employers. Here's the simple answer. First, learn the basics, then choose a project and build it. Let me show you how to find the perfect beginner project, what's important for creating a perfect portfolio website and everything in between. You might wonder, which skills should you learn first and in which order? Let me answer those questions for you. First, you should learn a bit of theory about how the internet works, including the different parts of a website such as browsers, frontends, backends, servers and the HTTP protocol. Then you can start learning HTML. HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language, is essential for web developers because it's used to define the basic structure and layout of every single website on the internet. Next on your list should be CSS. CSS is the styling language of the web. But what's a styling language? While HTML defines the basic structure of your website, CSS helps to make it beautiful and work out every little detail of your web design. The third essential language for web developers is JavaScript. It's the programming language of the web and the only language browsers understand natively. JavaScript is necessary to add interactivity to your websites, like triggering a form submission when you click a button or sorting a table, for example. Other valuable skills are the developer tools of your browser, which help you immensely while developing your websites. You can get helpful information about the layout, play around with different CSS and see the effects instantly. Or debug your JavaScript to find errors quickly. Learn how to deploy your applications to a hosting service to make them public. Services like Cloudflare Pages, Versal or Netlify are best for beginners as they enable you to publish your website with just a single click. Let's look at the different ways to learn the basics of web development. You can use many great resources on the internet for free. But before I tell you my favorite resources, let's talk about the different kinds of resources and their benefits. The first are tutorial videos. Video content is accessible to consume. You get audio and visuals, which are easier for many people to learn than text. But videos tempt the viewer only to consume them passively because they don't require so much effort compared to books, for example. Apps and interactive online courses are another option for learning web development. This approach is perfect for beginners because it is guided by learning by doing. And learning by doing is one of the most effective ways of learning new skills. Next on our list are books. They are a little bit old school, but they are still helpful. They require you to read and understand the topic and they encourage Bruh. active engagement. With books, you can decide the pace, skip things you already know and highlight things for later. Bootcamps or online courses with a teacher can be efficient because you have someone to ask questions to. However, it is often expensive, so I recommend starting out with one of the other options and if you like web development, you can still switch to a bootcamp later. Okay, now let me give you some resources I would use if I had to start from zero again. First, Free Code Camp is an entirely free interactive online course platform. It's beneficial for beginners because it combines hands-on coding challenges with real-world projects, allowing learners to build practical skills while progressing at their own pace. Codecademy is another popular choice for interactive online courses. Codecademy provides interactive, structured lessons with instant feedback. And now let me recommend some YouTube channels to you. I like BroCode and Super Simple Dev and the websites W3Schools and MDN offer complete text-based tutorials for beginners for free. And finally, let me recommend you some books. I can recommend HTML and CSS, Design and Build Websites by John Duckett. And for learning JavaScript, Eloquent JavaScript, A Modern Introduction to Programming by Margin Haverbecki. Okay, now that you know the best ways and resources to learn the basics, wow. your next step is to pick the first project you can work on. You should be passionate about the project, so try to find something you really want to build. But make sure that it isn't too complex so you don't struggle. This can cause you to lose motivation. I started building websites when I was 16 years old, for example. I wanted to earn some extra money, so I created websites and ran ads on them. It was fun learning everything and in the end I was proud of what I had achieved. Later I got into game development. Smartphones were relatively new and I was genuinely interested in creating mobile games. And now I'm primarily into web development, creating web apps for clients and my projects. So basically I want to say pick something you're interested in creating. Let me list some actual examples to give you some inspiration. 
First, a personal website or portfolio is an excellent choice for your first project. It can be your personal hub to display information about yourself, highlighting your profile and personality, and offering potential employers everything they need to get a good picture of you. Second, a simple web app like a to-do list is a great choice to make sure when looking for a web app idea, it should be easy. Focus on one single feature and don't overcomplicate in the beginning. And third, a simple HTML5 game like Tic-Tac-Toe or Snake can be a great choice. Games are fun and testing your game while developing can be more fun than testing a boring website. Now let's focus on how to create an outstanding portfolio website. Let's start by clarify what a portfolio website actually is. A portfolio website is your website for showcasing your work, skills and experiences in a structured way. It's often used like a digital CV to present yourself to recruiters and talent scouts. So let's get into the details of your portfolio site. The homepage of your site should feature a prominent hero section at the top of your page. Most of the times it contains a headline, a call to action and an image. It's designed to grab attention and show the site's main message. This leads us to the second page of your site, the contact page. This page should display a contact form which can be used to send a message to you. And the next important page is the portfolio. You should use this page to display all the projects you have done so far, include a title, a strong description and some images. And the last useful page of your portfolio site is the resume page. Here you should offer the visitor your traditional resume as a PDF download. Okay, another very important question you could ask yourself is, how can I tell when I'm ready for a real job? Let's break it down together. First, you should feel confident in all the basic skills we've covered so far. Next, you should have completed several learning projects and showcased them on your portfolio website. A good rule of thumb is this. If you can build a full website from scratch using HTML, CSS and JavaScript and you're familiar with the basics of a front-end framework like React or Angular, then you're ready to apply for a junior front-end developer role. But where should you apply? Of course, your portfolio won't attract much attention unless you promote it. I highly recommend using LinkedIn since it's where most recruiters are. Build a strong profile on LinkedIn and include a link to your portfolio website. Start networking with recruiters who are hiring front-end developers. You can use LinkedIn's built-in search feature and try looking for terms like junior front-end developer. Now you know all the steps you need to take to go from learning to getting hired. It will definitely be challenging, but if you work on it steadily, you can reach your goal faster than you think. Okay, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you liked it and learned a lot. To support my work, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to not miss any content about learning to code. So have a great day and see you next time.